we're back on another Mindset Monday series powered by the CEO Pulse Podcast with my co-host, Justin Thorstad. What's up, brother? Glad Hola, to brother. have you. Glad to be here. All right. Um, we were we we're kind of bouncing ideas on, on what the topic for today should be. And uh, we came across the uh, the concept of situations and problems, right? A lot of times, one, of, one of, well, actually, one of the things that I was talking about or I was thinking about last week was the problems that I'm having currently. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to, uh, you know emphasize the word problems. Um, I was thinking about, you know, the companies and I have, you know, things going on because we're opening a branch uh, on the brokerage and then we have deals going on on the wholesale fix and flip. And then I have a whole another thing going on with um, the education business. And, and, and I was looking at them as, you know, for a minute there, I got caught up in it. I got tangled up in the whole situation. Yeah. And, and like, this is problems, problems. And, and then I took a step back. I was, um, I took a step back. I was meditating and that's how I kind of, you know, settled in. Um, but I realized that like all this activity, all these, you know, things that are happening, it's because, you know, I'm taking action. So I created those, those issues, right? There was nothing there before the thought came in, before the thought of, you know, building the education uh, part, building the brokerage, building any of that stuff. So like the, um, the one thing that landed was, you know, what problems are you creating, right? And are they really problems or are they just situations that are happening uh, as you go along in pursuit of your dream, right? That thought alone right there just shifted my whole paradigm. Totally. Well, and, you know, when we say problems, I think people give a negative connotation to that word problems. Yeah. But yeah, you can be dealing with the stuff that's just everyday life that comes up and unfolds. But what we're really talking about here is creating a problem that you get to go solve, right? Like right. elevated problems. Yeah, totally. Because especially for serial entrepreneurs like us, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I've got multiple businesses and it's like it's wearing all those different hats in one day. You yeah. know what I mean? And having to oscillate between them and take care of things. But what I love about that is, you know, hey, uh, if you rewind the tape, say five years, where were you? How many of these businesses did oh, you yeah. have? How yeah. successful were they? You know what I mean? Yep. And so if you can forecast five years ahead and be like, okay, where do I want to be? And what is that problem that I get to go solve? How do I get there? Yeah. Because if you're not doing that, like, what is the intention? You know what I mean? So, but yeah, it's, I find for myself too, especially the last couple of days, getting kind of lost in the weeds with it all, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> getting tangled up in it, and then fighting with situations and so forth. And what I noticed, the problem is, when I get lost in that stuff, I can start to just identify with the problems and I notice my vibe going lower. I notice my energy going lower. And what really helps is to break away from that and get an elevated view. You know what I mean? Like lift your gaze above the maze, so to speak, to become mm, like objective, that. to look at things for what they are. Yeah. And to be in a state of gratitude of like, oh man, these are such awesome problems to have. Yeah. Like I, I get to go to work on these things. I get to solve these problems these issues so that I can elevate because without these situations, I wouldn't be growing a hundred percent. So, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's taking the, or shifting the paradigm, right. To, from problems to, to opportunities. And, and that's, I mean, that's an old adage. I mean, you hear it often. It's almost like a cliche, uh, in, in the uh, personal growth business or side of things, but it, it's, it, it's true. It really is true. Right. The stuff that's happening, anything that's happening, if you're an entrepreneur, a, you know, a lot of the stuff, that uh, that is going on around you is because you were the um, the catalyst for it, right? Totally. You you took an action that ta that action had ripple effects, um, and and consequences, good or bad or whatever, or situations just happened, um, and it's it's part of that whole thing. I mean, what I wanna what I really wanna highlight is is you know the fact that we can, we have the power to to pause, to take a minute, take a breath, <sighs> breathe it all in, right? Totally own it. Just whatever that situation is, whatever that moment is, whatever that energy at that you know time and place is, um, you can contemplate it. You can. You can just pause it for a second. And we're always going a thousand miles an hour, but we can pause. We can pause for a second and then think about this whole thing and then just um, take a few steps, you know, go down memory lane, right? Just like you said, five years ago, completely different space, completely different place. Um, the dream was there, but not the uh, not the the movement, not the activity, not the uh, you know the action that's happening, not the problems, quote unquote, yeah, or yeah. situations. So, 
it's it's a good way it's a good practice just to you know put ourselves back in that space everything that's happening right now it doesn't it, like, if you're an agent going through business i mean you didn't have that before uh, you didn't you had a license you didn't have you know the situations that you're exactly. going through right now yeah. before you or the problems quote unquote before you created that opportunity for yourself right before it was an opportunity it was a dream before it was a dream it was a thought right yeah um but then it's it's funny though because taking then it all back yeah. we we get into action and start having some success, and then you yeah. realize, oh, there's things that I didn't predict or plan on yeah. because I didn't have the experience to know that that was coming down the down the pipe. Yeah. Um, and then it's so easy to get negative on, oh my gosh, I have all these problems now. And it's like, well, that's the opportunity, right? Because when I solve these problems, then I get to move forward. But also, like, why not create a problem in your head that you want to go solve? Yeah. You know. And so exactly. it, it, it's just uh, again, I, I think taking the negative connotation off of that word problems because problems are something you get to go solve yeah and when you're if you have the ability to to look at situations objectively and come at it from many different angles like you're always going to come up with resources if you're resourceful yeah and solutions for every problem because if the problem didn't have a solution by definition it wouldn't be a problem you know what i mean so but i think what i love so much about what you said though is you've got to create time to pause and take a step back so that you can start to become objective because it's so easy, especially with multiple businesses, <coughs> to get lost in. Like, listen, I don't know any business that doesn't have holes in it. You know what I mean? Like, you can look at the front end of a business that and it's percent. successful and it generates revenue, it's profitable, <coughs> uh, the culture's wonderful, all the people are happy, and everything from the outside looks fantastic. But if you go into the back end, this system's old and antiquated, there's yeah. not a system for this, and it takes a lot of labor. You know, there's just holes, right? So right. it's almost like Swiss cheese. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So yeah. everyone of the businesses has that. And to start identifying or getting lost in it and tangled up in the issues, like that can really bring you down, especially when you got multiple businesses. So taking a moment to just stop, lift your gaze above that maze, then breathe. Yeah. 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 Bring it. Bring it back to to uh, to that center of awareness. I mean, it really. It really. I mean, I think that makes a difference. Um, you said something very important: uh, resources versus resourceful, right? And, and I think as we're going through problems, we're going through issues, situations, or whatever. Um, it's not about the resources that we have. It's about how resourceful we can be with what we have. Oh, totally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Whether that be a, you know systems or your team or your network or whatever that is, uh, one of the biggest things out there. Is really being resourceful and, and being able to tap into different, you know, pools of of, of people of you know whatever uh, connections or, or you know who not how type of deal to get stuff done. Um, a combination of those two for me has been, you know, one of the one of the uh, the uh, the blessings that I've, I've been able to to um, just understand as an entrepreneur. Right, um, I realize that a problem it's really uh, a manifestation of my dream. <laughs> you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. That sounds crazy, right? But when I see, for example, when I see success stories with my students, uh, when I see you know great things going on within the company, and I see uh, just collective improvement, people just leveling up, and 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 somehow some some way I was the catalyst, or the dream that I had five years ago was a catalyst for that. Every problem that I have right now, there's no way around it. There's no fucking way around it. Every problem that I have right now, it's a manifestation of my dream, right? Um, and take it for that. You know, it, yeah. it's it's there's there's pretty sides or bad sides or there's ugly sides or medium size. Well, but uh, <laughs> we assign that meaning and significance to the problem. Yeah. Right. Like it inherently doesn't have anything. Mm -hmm. We assign all meaning and significance. And so the resourcefulness, though, like I would love to take if I had to choose between two different people to hire, let's say somebody that's extremely intelligent, um, but not resourceful. Yeah. And someone that doesn't have a lot of experience but they're very resourceful, meaning they know how to go out there and, and they'll attack it from a thousand different ways if they have to, and they won't stop until they, they figure it out. Like, I'll take that resourceful person all day long because they just have that attitude that there's no problem that cannot be solved. And so right. they're willing to stop at nothing and do whatever it takes to get the end result. Like, that's the person that I want. And yeah. I think being a serial, serial entrepreneur, if you're going to have multiple businesses or hell, even just one successful business, you've got to be resourceful. And it's not just what resources do I have available? Like what I love about our men's mastermind, like that's such a great space to come and just like, I'm stuck, I'm frustrated, and I'm just going to vomit my feelings and frustrations and, 
get some feedback. You know what I mean? Get some objectivity because the other people aren't in the situation. So right. they can see it for what it really is instead of my lower self that's stuck in the problems. Right. Like, but that's being resourceful, right? Ex- like, absolutely, 100%. And, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs have that kind of lone ranger mentality oh, yeah. where if I reach out for support... Bro, it's almost like a badge on the shoulder, a chip on the shoulder, right? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I, I can do this. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm going to figure all this, all the things, the ins and outs and everything by myself. And I don't need anybody. I'm self-made. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, you no. know what? You, that just means if, you're not resourceful. Side note, if, if that's, that's a mentality that you're adopting or you have adopted... Um, Drop it. Yeah. Drop it like a sign. <laughs> well, when, here's the problem. Like, if you're always thinking that Lone Ranger it, yeah. like, it's got to be me doing it. Because if I ask for help, if I reach out for support, that means that I'm not capable and I'm not enough. And whatever the limiting belief is, like, that's the that's the reason that that mindset, that mentality is, like, holding you back. You know, I, um, oh, gosh, it was, like, seven uh, Six years ago, I went to this personal development program. It was a 90-day goal-setting thing. And at the very onset of it, um, you you list out, like, your limiting beliefs and what you want to be more of. And somebody creates this, what they call a contract for you. It's Mm -hmm. like an I am statement of what you are. And when you're given the contract, like, it's a gift because it doesn't fit what you believe about yourself. But very early on in that 90-day segment, I got an, uh, an amendment to my contract. And at the tail end of it, I had to add... My way is not necessarily the best way. In fact, I know it's not. And I was so <laughs> pissed off about that because I'm like, oh, don't oh, you see my results? You, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, how yeah, dare yeah. you? But it, it, it broke me of something yeah. that if my way is always the best way, like I'm limited to my own level of creativity, mm. my own intelligence, my own everything. And that's I'm going to stay small. It's not that I can't grow. I certainly can. But not to the extent possible if I'm open to all ways. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, like, one way to do something. It's just a way of many different ways, of infinite possibilities. So the Lone Ranger mentality, like, doesn't serve you. Yeah, I know it all. Yeah, yeah. It just keeps that narrow focus where you're going to be – it's not that you won't get to your end result with that mentality, but what prices are you paying? How long is it going to take? You know, while you're on that track, one thing – one word that I've never adopted is the expert. The expert. (laughs) I don't, I, I don't like that word. Uh, you may know a lot about a sub, uh, you know, subject, right, or a topic mm-hmm. or, or a skill set or whatever. You may know a lot, of, but uh, the word expert is just something that's never landed. It just doesn't resonate with, with what I believe, right? I, I think we're all a process of, of improvement, constant process of improvement. Um, and like you said, if you, if you know it all, if you're the expert, your perspective is limited, Right. Totally. You created the, the word expert just creates automatically creates this box around um, your your growth. Yeah. Like because it ain't getting any expert, better than yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I'm it. Yeah. I know it all. I'm the expert. <laughs> um, and and take that. Right. I mean, we can take that and we, we see, you know, coaching experts. We see all kinds of but, but there's no a- anyways, that's a whole different can of worms. But when you take it to a personal context and you're the if you see yourself as the expert of yourself. Your mm. perspective is limited, right? Totally. Your growth yeah. is limited. Well, I tell my people all the time in my organizations, like the other the other leaders and so forth, like if I'm the smartest guy in the room, we're fucked. Yeah. You know, because that means we're limited to me, you know? Yeah. So we've got to be open to all yeah. possibilities yeah. And, and all perspectives to see what is the highest and best outcome here and what's, yeah. the, what's the best path. Yeah. So so what's your take on 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 problems? I mean, this is this is... When you come across something that's that's new, that's fresh, or you're not expecting, uh, and, and again, my take on problems is they're a manifestation of my dream. That's how I see them. That's how I approach them. They may not be the, the good side of the manifestation. You know, the good side is profitability, is re, uh, results, it's change, it's impact, it's empowerment to to entrepreneurship. Right. That's mm-hmm. my my good side. But it's just the other side of the coin. How do you approach uh, whenever you come across you know problems or issues that they're not foreseen? Well, I look at all of it as they're all learning experiences. It's all an opportunity for me to grow, for me to learn more, and again, become more resourceful. So whether it's a, a good problem that you're, you're creating the problem that you get to go solve, such as starting a new business, um, how to fulfill this mission, um, how to you know, elevate your profitability, all those things, like those are the, we'll call them good problems. Yeah. But the bad problems, like for me, my weaknesses is like uh, analytical systems, 
you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff, I'd rather like cut my wrist with my cell phone. <coughs> it's like, painful. It just, it, it's very it's painful. painful to see you in front of a computer. I yeah, mean, I'm I, just gonna say uh, that. We, we, we put just it out went over this a few yeah. minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and but hey, I'm <laughs> honest about it. Um, but I'm resourceful, right? Because who helped me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> very resourceful. Put me to work. But I, you know, um, that Lone Ranger mentality uh, I used to have, and it really me comes too. down to yeah. um, control issues, yeah. the illusion of control, anyways. And so, when it, the other types of problems that are the bad problems, you know, when it comes to accounting or systems and things of that nature, like I busted up that control issue that I had, that mentality, and I love delegating now. So again, resourceful. Find someone that's really damn good at that thing. You know what I'm saying? And they love doing it. They understand it. They're going to get it done in a short amount of time. Like you're going to get your end results so much faster. So the way I approach problems is cool. I see there's something I get to learn from and I'm going to head on and I'm going to tackle or I'm going to delegate it. Sounds so like a situation. Way, yeah. yeah, totally. It's 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 case by case scenario. Yeah. Um, but again, why not? Like, I think the whole premise of what we were talking about is what problem do you want to create in your imagination that you get to go solve? Because no, you're, you're not well equipped to go tackle that yeah. yet. And you don't know what you don't know. You are unconscious of your incompetence. So when you start mm -hmm. down that path, you're going to start learning a lot of new things that you didn't, you couldn't plan for. You didn't know were going to happen because you never experienced it before. How the hell would you know? But you get to go do that. I mean, it's either that and learn and grow every day, or you're going to be in a state of decay. Yeah. If you're not growing, you're decaying. Yeah. Yep. So if you're doing the same damn thing every single day, staying in your box, like you are in a slow state of decay. So why not go be adventurous? Why not go like, you know, it's a hero's journey, man. Yeah. Like it's a spice of life. That's my yeah. opinion. Yeah. No, I love it. Um, the uh, the issue of control. Going back, I think one of the things that just kind of landed um, right now, as you were saying it, it, it's I used to micromanage. I used to just do everything. I used to have that like I'm gonna figure it out and the the, uh, the Lone Ranger, yeah. you know, type of um, approach to to business. <clears throat> At the beginning, it was control. Right. It's easy to create a baby. Uh, you, you, when you have a business, it's like a baby. Mm -hmm. It's it's like yeah, mm, yeah. you don't want to give your baby away. No, no. Um, it, it's then you you start get some traction, some results, some you know. The baby gets his own little attitude, right? And, and like it's it's hard to leave it with a babysitter. Like it's a baby. Um, so so that was my take on it. But after a while, like I became okay with uh, re, uh, releasing some of that control. However, I was still skeptical, and I think I held it for way longer than I needed to or I should have um, because of personal insecurity. Yeah, totally. So you bring on a team, you start, you know, bring on, on people and whatnot, and then, um, man, what if I, I mean, what if I open up and I, and I actually start asking, you know, for help on things? Like, what is that? I'm an entrepreneur. I don't yeah. need help. And, and it just puts you in that state of vulnerability, right? I think it can be hard to... Um, <clears throat> to consume uh, when you're starting off, especially if you're, I mean, it's an e totally an ego thing. Uh, it, yeah. It's, uh, I don't want to be found out. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to figure things out as I'm going with this. And, and uh, if I open up, if I do, you know, uh, people might find out that I'm figuring shit out as I go. Yeah, that I'm insufficient yeah. and I don't know what I'm exactly. doing yet. Well, exactly. duh. Yeah, of I course mean, you don't. You know, it, so, but the thing about it is, like, so if anyone watching is, is actually struggling with that problem of relinquishing control and delegating some things yeah. is. Experience like, will come inevitably. Totally. So. But the end result that you can get to by just dropping this illusion of control and starting to delegate and asking for support is mental bandwidth. So we mm. all have a mental bandwidth, <clears throat> and that's comprised of many different things. Yep. So you know, if you're doing all the systems and the accounting and the whatever else there is, oh, then also you have a life, right? So if you got kids, if you got a honey, you know, making dinner tonight, whatever, like, is consuming your mental bandwidth. You only have so much. That's your capacity. Right. And so the more you get off your plate, that means all that mental bandwidth gets to be focused, focused attention and intention on a thing, like. What is your role in the organization? The highest and best. You know what Keep I'm saying? Keep talking yeah. about that, yeah. Because if you're doing 10 different damn things and you always got to be oscillating between them, like you're going to be limited. And not that it won't <clears> work. <throat> However, what if you just narrowed it down to like one, maybe two roles that you have and that's all you do all day long? Yeah. By the way, your roles are typically things that you're good at and it's the thing that moves the needle forward in creating results and profitability. 100%. You know what I mean? Like 
like my real estate brokerage. I'm not the broker. I'm not the admin. I'm not the accountant. I'm the coach. You're not the IT guy. No, I'm definitely not the <laughs> IT guy. <laughs> What's IT stand for? Yeah. I'm kidding. It's, yeah. it's a scary clown. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a scary clown. <laughs> so, you know, my my role is lead coach. Yeah. I coach the branch managers, I, partners. I coach the agents. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. moves the needle forward and creating results. So, why would you want to be all things when you can just focus all that mental bandwidth? And then how much energy and attention would you be putting into your role and what kind of results could you produce from that? Yeah. But the need to control it all, you're doing all the things, you're probably not doing anything very effective. Yeah. That's my take on it. What I found for me and, and the ability for me to duplicate myself and scale my business, I had to get things off my plate and focus. Absolutely. I mean, it's it really, I mean, it comes down to, to your highest and best, right? It's interesting. Um, one of my, uh, my coaches a while, a long time ago, I was, uh, and I was just very, very into the transactional side of real estate and whatnot. And, and he told me like, there's a lot of ways to play in, in, in this space. There's a lot of ways to play in the industry, in any industry, right? Sure. So pl- pick the way that you want to play in. Um, you are doing I mean, an outstanding job growing, Right, this this uh, this brokerage, Libertas Real Estate. Um, your main role in it is to actually come in and empower the team that are that that's coming, that's putting the whole thing together. People that are coming into it, and you have this this X factor, right, that just plugs into everything that you do. Your principles, people follow, people see, and they get inspired, and then they they produce so their their <clears throat> success is a byproduct of what you're doing, right? And then the money that you're generating is a byproduct of their success. Absolutely. Yeah, so it kind of it, you know it trickles out. But if you were caught in the admin side of things, if you were caught in the other you know type of problems that you know you understand you have that awareness, uh, it'd be a whole different story, right? Yeah, that's where yeah. Burnout because comes that out. if I'm doing those other roles, yeah, that's that much less attention, energy, time invested into what actually produces desirable results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is empowering <clears throat> those people to go create a bigger, better life, not just more business. Yeah, right. Because you and I both know like. You can invest yourself, plummet yourself into your business, and, and it can be all-consuming. Yeah. But then, okay, you only got one facet of your life, one dimension that's firing at 100%, and that's going to come at a cost to all the other facets, your health, your relationships, all those kinds of things. So it's about how do you create bigger, better results in all facets of life simultaneously? Yeah, it's <clears> – <throat> I like the, uh, the term lifestyle entrepreneur. Um, I feel like, and I, I've said this before, but I feel like I protect my time more than I protect my, my, my oh, cash. Yeah. I don't know oh, if that's a good thing. For sure. <laughs> it, 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 I feel like it's a good thing. Um, but it's, um, you know, you get to that space where, yeah, you understand what's going on. You understand that you want uh, the places that you want to play in and then design everything that you're headed or that you're building in order so you, so you can play in. You can actually, <clears throat> so you can actually play in those places. Yeah, totally. Um, well, and yeah. if you don't identify that, if you don't identify your role, how do you have that criteria so that when new opportunities yeah. come in or scalability or growth, how do you know what to gauge it on to say yes or no yes to those things? No. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if you don't have that, <clears throat> you could find yourself saying yes to a lot of things that are not the highest and best use of your time. Now even more overwhelmed, which takes more time and more energy that's taken away from other facets in life. Yeah. So focused attention on your role is, I, I think, key to scalability. I love it, man. I love it. Um, yeah, again, going back to the, uh, to the original um, uh, conversation, it, it's, you know, problems have a negative connotation to them, right? But if we shift that and we just understand that problems uh, or situations, they're just a manifestation of your dream, the thought that came in at the beginning when you were first getting started and you contemplate them as that, and you take a step back to realize what's going on, um, they're not going to seem as ugly. Yeah, well, know, and anymore. the problem it's, is it's the opportunity where you get to grow, where you they get be- to learn. Yeah, they become, become a lot more approachable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. build your, your <clears throat> community, your tribe, you yeah. know, of other people that can do the certain things better than you, faster than you, and they love to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, they say no man is an island. Like, If you want to build, you want to grow, yeah. it's going to require more people. And so what better way to get those people than to say, hey, I require some fucking help. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Come in and then um, just take it from from that um, um, space of ownership, right? Totally. <coughs> well, responsibility, yeah. the ability to ownership respond to the situation. But again, that that problem, looking at it as not as a negative problem, like, oh, I have to go do this. Situation. So it's responsibility. Yeah. yeah. It's situational. And 
like this is my opportunity to grow because if I'm not growing, I'm decaying. Yeah. Stagnant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, uh, fam, just think about if you're in a space where you're contemplating issues, you're contemplating problems, you're getting overwhelmed, you're tired, you're, I don't know, you feel like you're drowning um, in, in the entrepreneur journey. And it happens a lot over the first two years. Um, and then it, con- it continues to happen over the next life time if you're still <laughs> yeah. entrepreneur so it, it doesn't go away it's, it's just different it's, levels it, of it. different levels it's different parts like right now i laugh at the things i used to consider problems <laughs> you know 10 years ago um yeah. and uh, it's like wow man it, the growth is there right but now problems are still happening or quote-unquote problems situations are still happening manifestations of my dream are still happening yeah um <clears throat> But if you're in that space, I mean, just understand that there's there was a thought, there was an illusion, there was a um, a motivation, right, that got you to take some action that created this, uh, with the uh, the the concept of of problems or situations, you know, that goes hand in hand with productivity, goes hand in hand with growth, goes hand in hand with success, right? So take a moment. We have the ability to take a moment. Uh, if you feel like you're getting rushed, if you're feeling you're you know hauling ass 24 seven and you can't take a minute to sit down and then zip a cup, uh, cup of coffee, uh, you can, you can, you can find five minutes to just sit there and then contemplate what's happening. And I mean contemplate when you breathe, when you connect, when you just you know give it some thought and sit there, really sit there in silence and then think about the situation that's happening, um, and then backtrack it to the origin of your dream of why you got started. Um, it it um, the problems become friendlier per se. Now it's something that's workable as opposed to something that's eating you up. So yeah, that's that's my absolutely. Take on that. And 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 for <clears throat> me, <clears throat> when I find myself in those situations, yeah. my pause is okay. Let me get back to my why. Mm. What emotionally, energetically, what was the purpose of all of this? Let me go connect to that. Yeah, and take a break from all the the chatter in my mind that you know incessant chatter of that inner roommate, and pause that for a moment connect and then yeah take an objective look at the situation okay what is there here for me to learn and grow from so this is an opportunity because now i get to take that new information that learning experience into everything else i do in my life 100 percent, man i love it i love it all right fam so there you guys have it they're not problems they're situations right they're manifestations of your dream uh, your thought created that vision. That vision created that dream. Dream created some actions. Those actions manifested into something else. Uh, and there are opportunities for progress, for growth, for uh, development. So let's take it as that. Yep. Justin, where can somebody find you? Um, uh, com, Facebook, Instagram. JustinThorstad.com. Uh, um, YouTube, right? Just started that. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot, just, lot of work to. Yeah, to be find done my there. my my friend Justin Thorstad on YouTube. Uh, you have a lot of uh, videos on there that are are solid. Like I love, I love it. So um, there you guys have it. And if you haven't signed up to our uh, channels or uh, any of that stuff, find me at Rafael Cortez, CEO, on all social media platforms on YouTube. Uh, sign up, like, and share. Stay focused. You got this. Boom. <laughs>